How easy is it to distinguish between public art and graffiti? Public art and graffiti tend to have similar aspects, which tend to confuse people when asked to distinguish between the two. Many people interpret all types of art to overlap. They are not wrong, but it is harder than people think to tell them apart. Individuals are likely to have different perspectives, therefore a piece of art can be pondered as a different type of art than the artist intended. It is the same case with public art and graffitis. Graffitis has a negative connotation attached to it due to its connection with vandalism, which can offend the public. Also, doesn't, it doesn't necessarily have to be considered as art. It can just be scribbles on a wall or other properties. It is often a trace from gangs to mark their territories. So when other gangs cover up the old graffitis, it can lead to violence and other crimes. On the other hand, public art has a more positive view when it comes to the public. It can address serious issues in a way that is pleasant to the human eye, but at the same time communicates socially relevant matters to the society. There are different types of public art, such as traditional, stencil, stickers, and 3D art. Traditional includes spray paint that is artful and elaborate. Stencil is an easier method that mostly involves outlines, and finally, stickers are a simpler way to spread the images. However, the majority of those characteristics can be applied to graffiti. Brooklyn Shop is well owners in Brooklyn also like the graffiti because it brings attention to the area. It also seems that tourists Any like the paintings and drawings in the streets as they pay for tour guides to show them around. Everyone has freedom as long as it doesn't affect the freedom from all over or the world of others. The UK come here to what we came with in conclusion is that it's not easy at all to distinguish between public art and graffiti and that they can coexist in Brooklyn as long as it doesn't bypass the freedom of the people living there. From the perceived confines of the formal art world, they challenge the entire concept of art by situating it in non-art contexts, making it seem art-provoking or, to some, simply provoking. Graffiti's history shows that it is associated with violence or a type of rebellion, giving the reason why people don't appreciate it as much. Many people argue that graffiti is art because people take the time and effort and the artist uses their world as their canvas. Of course, many disagree with it and still insist that it is destruction of property. Public art can express community values, enhance our environment, transform a landscape, heighten our awareness, or question our assumptions. Placed in public sites, this art is there to everyone. But who is the public or everyone? Most public art is located in a multicultural community with each person having a different reaction. Many considered public art as a contribution to public history, a part of the changing culture, adding more value and meaning to the area, and the same to graffiti. Both the artists of both public art and graffiti are some prefer van and graffiti or some prefer vandals, have their inner vision and show how they view the world, as well as they're both very similar art forms and don't require spatial limitations or any type of limiting concerning words or graphics. Both are visual arts created in public locations, usually unsanctioned artwork executed outside of the context of traditional art venues. The two can be a powerful platform for reaching the public and a potent form of political expression for the opposed. The desire of artists is to provoke the diverse nature of viewing the public. Graffiti and public art have earned international attention and has entered into the mainstream world art. These forms of art have been more accepted by the general public now, most likely due to its artistic recognition and the high-profile status of Banksy and other artists. As a definition of public art, which is anything in the art form for the public, graffiti is most definitely part of public art, and it maintains a high status in urban culture. Sorry, what do I, uh, so just ask me something I will say. Um, okay, so do you think that graffiti is the same as public art? Uh, yeah, definitely, because especially graffiti is like the face of Brick Lane, basically. It's, it's kind of one of the special thing about Brick Lane and everyone comes here, you know, to appreciate graphic graffiti art or take pictures, so I definitely 
a great that refugees are in. Do you think it adds value or is it like a change of culture um, to the area? Yeah, it does in a good way, but um, depends. I think should be like restrictions, like some areas you allow and some you don't. But. You think that they're thought provoking some of this artwork? Uh, if they are, it's it's a good thing because that's what the art is supposed to be. It's not just about being pretty. So yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, I, I personally really like this because I just live in Brickway two minutes from here and every day is like, I mean, kind of just a part of the, the daily basis, so it's not a big thing for me, but I like it and should be here. Okay. Okay. So I think that art is a good thing. Public graffiti has two sides to it. It can look very decorative, it can even brighten up places that are usually dingy and dark and you know, there's not really much going on there. But of course there's the other side of it of the owners that own the property. You know, a lot of graffiti artists don't ask for permission before they spray something and so it may look good but it can be detrimental to someone else's property. But the difference between, I'd say between art and graffiti how can I say I think graffiti is always personal and art doesn't need it. art is more of how someone sees something else and graffiti always seems to be about the person creating the graffiti so it's like their tag so yeah. they'll do their tag everywhere and so I think it's very a lot of time it'll be very re repetitive so it's not that they do so many different arts of work a lot of graffiti artists i think do the same work over and over and over not to say that it's not art of course it's art any way you want to express yourself is art but there is the graffiti thing with people's property and me as a property owner that i worry about okay. you know you're gonna stand so far away <laughs> subjective issue where you can decide yourself whether you think of it as art or graffiti I don't think there are any rules suggesting either way so um, it's entirely up to the individual do you think graffiti is mostly associated with vandalism or is it more associated with art uh, well I think there's several different types of graffiti there's graffiti art which has often been regarded as a, uh, a distinct art form, like uh, graffiti on American, uh, on New York subway trains, and sometimes on London subway trains. Sometimes on buses, you see um, graffiti. Uh, often tags on people's names, um, or uh, images of from from the uh, graffiti artists. And it's difficult to say whether that's art or graffiti art. Do you think that public art or graffiti adds more value to the area? Um, as a visitor to the area, visitors probably think, oh, this looks really nice, but it's a different matter for the locals to have to live with it. Uh, you'd have to ask what the locals think of the art that they're surrounded by, or the graffiti they're surrounded by. Um, I quite like the graffiti art, some of it. Some of it's not very successful, some of it's really badly done. Uh, some of it's fantastic, but um, whether I enjoy it or not is not really the point because I don't live here. Do you think most of the work is thought-provoking? Provo most of it. Um, no, I wouldn't say most of it. Most of it's just people expressing um, their own views, their ideas of what things look like. There is some political graffiti art around, but you have to look for it. Most of it's just nice to look at. Um, it's not particularly um, political or, or provocative. That's it. Okay. Can I go, please? Side of things, but I guess just your perspective okay, as yeah. a shop owner. Yeah. Fine. Okay then. So are you filming? Yeah. Okay. Hi. <laughs> um. Yeah. Like I said, I've got some art on the front of my shutter, and that's kind of in that style. So obviously I like it. I think it adds character to places. Um, 
I think it good, it's good because it draws people, which I'm really surprised that I see so many people spending money on like the guided tours. Like I see them every day all over and I'm just like, oh my God, I can't believe people love it that much, but they do. Um, but yeah, I think it's good. I like it. I've always, I've always liked it. I think it's a good thing. It adds, you know, something. <laughs> In conclusion, art is subjective and can mean different things to different people. While some might find some sort of deep meaning in a painting that is white, others might consider it rubbish. For that reason, art depends on perspective. If one believes that tagging, tagging his name or painting something beautiful on a wall is some kind of art, then it has to be. Yet it should not be accepted by the public if one does not have consent of the owners of these walls. Asking around in Brick Lane, we discovered that many locals think that graffiti and public art are not the same. Some mentioned that graffiti was the face of Brick Lane and that graffiti adds value to the area. But there was to be restrictions. Shop owners in Brick Lane also like the graffiti because it brings attention to their area. It also seems that tourists like the paintings and drawings in the streets as they pay for tour guides to show them around. Everyone has freedom as long as it doesn't affect the freedom or well-being of others. What we came with in conclusion is that it's not easy at all to distinguish between public art and graffiti and that, it, and that they can coexist in Brick Lane